course, all you've done is turn on the lights, the rear defroster, and the hazards. Let me have this. It's one of the best racing stories ever told. Ford builds an epic race car, the GT40, goes to Le Mans and beats Ferrari. And several decades later, to remind us all of this, they reissued the legendary GT40 in 2005 as this, the Ford GT. It was a full-on supercar, 5.4 liter supercharged V8, 550 horsepower, rear wheel drive. But unlike other supercars of the era, they barely modernized it. So now, thanks to Drive Motorsports in Vancouver, who hooked us up with the LFA, we can present to you another legend. The 2006 Ford GT, which is now worth about a half a million dollars Canadian. But little did we know as we were driving this example around Vancouver early this morning, that the Ford GT was going to show us just how much of a 60s race car it really was. And this trip wouldn't have been possible without a wonderful partnership with Haggerty, the go-to place for insuring vehicles just like this one. Thomas even has his Alpha and his old Mercedes insured with them. And it's not just classic cars either. They insure all cars that fit the mold of special. We'll talk about them more at the end, but for now, if you want to, you can find out more at haggerty.ca slash throttlehouse. If you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing around. So subscribe and hit the bell. Let me take you back to 2006. Daniel Craig had just become Bond. I think Justin Timberlake had just brought Sexy back. And you could still buy a new Ford GT from the dealership. And there was nothing like this. I mean, there was the Carrera GT from Porsche, but that was pretty much hypercar level. That was unaffordable, unattainable. This, for a supercar, was relatively affordable. That's because it's so simple. Okay, so yeah, you say goodbye to traction control and the dampers aren't adjustable and there's no flashy lights. And since the Ford GT is no stranger to a check engine light, you get the sense that these dials here, the oil pressure, the voltmeter, they're not just for show. In fact, you probably do well to keep an eye on them because after all, this is a reimagining of a race car. The thing is, a real race car is not designed to be comfortable. It's designed to go fast. In fact, you are an afterthought. Every part of it is hot, loud, dangerous. And since we're in the Haggerty garage, I get to show you this, an original GT40. And as you can see, it's not a very hospitable place. In fact, it looks downright dangerous. And the Ford GT that we're driving is designed to capture the essence of this. It's actually, oh my God, what the hell? The Ford GT we're driving is quite easy to drive, isn't it? Did you just bring me here so you could do that? No. This is where I hang out. I talk to my buddy Fernando Alonso. He's a good listener. I don't think he's real. He's such an idiot. As James said, this is actually a pretty easy car to drive. 
The clutch is light. The biting point's a bit high, but it's easy to use. The shifters, oh, nice. Steering is intuitive, and the visibility isn't even actually that bad. And I have this massive A-pillar here. But other than that, I can see where I'm going quite easily. Okay, that's a lie. There's no rearward visibility. But either way, I still get the sense that even though it is modernized, all it wants to do is go really, really fast in a straight line. It doesn't feel right here at low revs. I mean, you've, you've seen, you know, Matt Damon cheering on Batman as the original GT40 goes down the Molzan straight. This car wants to be like that. It wants to be a racer. I also get the sense that like that original GT40, it's a little bit dicey at speed. Dangerous. So to test that, we actually booked a track. It's about 10 miles away. I'm sorry. Okay, can we talk about the styling before I drive on the track, please? <laughs> to prolong my life. <laughs> you don't want to die in the rain. This is my Molzan straight. This is my, this is my nemesis, my Everest. Don't go over 7,000. Yes, Matt Damon says, yeah. So what we got? No, you've got rear-wheel drive. Rear-wheel drive. No traction control. No traction control, mid-engine. And, and honestly, a bit of a, a raw experience. On the road, yeah. it's loud. Just, just remember yeah. it as this. Before remember, we stuff remember it us into a wall. <laughs> a lot of walls here. All right, so let's talk about the design. Yeah. 2006, what, what really looked like this? Nothing. Nothing right. still looks like this. The hypercars, you'd have to go to the hypercars to get this level of insanity. You've got yes. the, the Veyron and, yeah. the, and the Carrera GT. And they're all more refined than this. Yeah, and if right? you think two years later, I guess supercars, the Audi R8 came out. Which is a very refined car. But it looks decades different. Which, yes. is, which is the idea. Well, that's the point. It's yeah. obviously yeah, this is to be an that. homage to the GT40's car. These are not the original wheels. It came on a special BBS wheel with an Eagle F1 tire. Yeah, Eagle f one Which you can't get anymore. So we put these on so that we could... Well, we were going to try and turn the tires to smoke, but we're just going to turn them into spray, I think, yeah. today. Yeah. Um, but it, but in the sense that it's the homage, it's done well, right? It's got the yes. same kind of roof canopy, the yep. same rear fascia, the side intakes. Yep. If a kid saw this, they'd be like, oh, Grandpa, this is from your generation. So in that sense, they've, su success. they've succeeded. Yeah, check this out, this part especially. Go over there, I'm going to need your help. Look at this door, how cool is that? Um, so I'm going to pull this here, and this whole section, push these little guys, right? This whole section comes up. Oh, sick. Right? Like, just this whole rear just looks like a race car. With the blue engine. With the blue engine. The Big ass supercharger on top, right? <laughs> I love seeing the, the t it sounds really silly in charge, yes. but I love seeing the whole top of the tire. It's just really neat. Like this is so, I keep saying race car, but that is what this is, right? It's all very, these are very loud. Like you hear every stone, every bit of water, everything, it echoes into the cabin. And you're, you're oftentimes not the most um, calibrated or just, just hand-eye coordination kind. It's not a defibrillator. It's an engine bay cover. I, don't, I did it wrong. I just need to be here. Yeah. Well, no, he's going to, I think you've got to give it a little bit of a. No, no, you don't. You okay, watch. Well, <laughs> try to kill me here. The car's going to try. Hey, it's not so easy, is it? <laughs> Ta da! <laughs> okay, I did it. There we okay, go. Some pressure in the right spot. How many times have you walked into this door? Every single time I've got out of the car. That's... Because it's not easy to get out. And you're like, and you look up and you go, like, oh, I've got all this space to stand. And then you do a natural forward motion and you go. Into and, that. and then you hit your almost half million dollar now car. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right in the, yeah. And the best part about this car is how low it is. So very, very low. It looks low to you, and it is low. I like, was following you in traffic. This is my hip line. It's yeah. at my hip. Following you in traffic, this looks like a spaceship. Yeah. It's so, so different. I think, honestly, the only car I've ever driven that's lower than this is the AutoZam AZ1. <laughs> <laughs> that's a K car. This is a race car. All right, let's check out the inside. Okay. And then maybe, and then, and then maybe, maybe I'll, I'll have discovered enough testicles the, to drive it down the street. I thought you mean you'd have discovered enough about it to die happy. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's the goal. Watch your head. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It sounds brilliant outside as well. It does. It doesn't. It doesn't like bar. I mean, the the the. 
how you doing in that it's seat just there. It's very slidey. It's really slidey leather. Yeah, I'll get to that in a second. <laughs> but like the, the original GT4, well, any V8 race car would have been deafening. Like they're deafeningly loud. I feel like everything would have shuddered and shaked. Oh yeah, on for idle. sure. This is calm on idle. Yes, it is. It's not really that calm when you're on it. But okay, lots of great stuff in here. First of all, I, I'm just like a child. No, I am a child. There's toggle switches. Not like the Ford Mustang toggle switches where you like click it up and it comes back. Right. A toggle switch that you click and it stays the direction. That, it that is looks just, like a museum piece. When you just did that, that yep. looks like a museum piece. Yep. This looks like, uh, like, well, it looks like an old race car, right? Dials that you purchased and you just put into a panel. That's all that is. This, this speedo's over there. This might be one of my favorite cockpits, just for 100%. simplicity. I love the small diameter steering it wheel. It is really tiny. I'm obsessed with the shifter. This The shifter is brilliant look in at, every look way. Look at the way this is lit. Yeah, okay, so at night. Museum I drove, piece again. Yeah, I drove this here in the dark, which is terrifying. And there's no, these aren't lit up. It's just the glow from the light on the side that lights the, it's really cool to look at. Um, so the seats, they're, they're ventilated, cooled, cool yes. seats. We've got these aluminum grommets. Yeah, like the, there's just holes in, in the seat. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's how they're. It's not, it's not ventilated though. Well, yes they are. What do you think ventilation means? Holes for air. Okay. <laughs> Push it. But we've got air, we do have some creature comforts in here. We've got aircon. We've got the Macintosh sound system, which is yep. an upgrade. <laughs> yeah, we have the right. choice of a passenger airbag on or off with the key. <laughs> yes. Choose wisely. Choose wisely. Yeah. Um, the, yeah. Yeah. We're done. There's nothing else to talk about. Um, that's it. We talked about all the things. What about the fact that the fuel <laughs> is right? Don't remind me. Here. This is the fuel tank right here. The center mounted. That's, that's a very race car thing. Is like, hmm, where should we put the fuel tank? Well, we want to put it as into the center of gravity, right? You want it in the center of the car, right near the middle, nice and low. So where's that? Always right by the driver. <laughs> there, there Here is, it is. It's coupled with a lack of practicality as well. This doesn't open. There's no, no there's no cubbies. There's no, there's cup no glove compartment. Uh, don't, that's airbag, careful with that. Don't be prying that well, open. Well, you might have you might have turned it off. You anyway. might turn it off, you don't know. Yeah. Um it, here's the thing, these seats, really hard. Yeah, they're not my favorite. But you know what? Yeah. They don't start becoming uncomfortable when you drive it for a long time. Just, I put an hour and a half stay. in this. They yeah. stay exactly like this amount of comfort, which is kind of neat. Just a bit slidey. They are very slidey. Yeah. It's, it's easy to get in and out. And like you get really ambitious when you, you can pivot your legs out and you go to stand up and you go uh, right into the thing. All right, Thomas, it's been nice knowing you. Yeah, I'm going to go try and see what speed I can hit down the straight. And then I'm going to have a go if you're still alive. OK. All right. Get out. As we had discussed, I was to be the first one to rip the GT down a very wet straightaway, but since I had already spent some time with that car in the rain this morning, and I knew how vengeful it was, well, I... yeah. James! Okay, Thomas has asked me to go first to dry up the track a bit because he said which is very kind of him, actually, that I'm exceptional. Well, he said it in a weird Canadian dialect. Expendable? Exp expendable? Sounds different. Here we go. Not scared. A little bit scared. A little bit scared. Oh, this thing wants to go sideways. Oh, that's quick. That's really quick. And really analog. That's the end of the straight. This thing actually packs some serious speed. Smell the tires there. Maybe got some smoke going. Okay, we're gonna go down the straight again. A little bit more careful. Okay, so this has 550 horsepower. And it's a supercharged V8. So it revs to six and a half thousand RPM, but it carries the power the whole way through the rev range. As a result, it's not slow. The original race car wasn't either, but this newer one is capable of naught to 60 in just over three and a half seconds. And like Thomas said, it's geared for racing. So it achieves that naught to 60 all whilst in first gear. And at the top of second gear, the car is at over 90 miles per hour, which I almost, got to the end of. And that supercharger is letting me build 
torque all the way to the red line. Oh shit, oh shit. That was really close to the wall. I think Thomas can drive now. I think that's perfect. Good time for me. <clears throat> so, so James spun. Um, it was very scary for me and everyone. I pooed my pants watching from a distance. Um, he's a legend. He saved it like a champion. Didn't hit the wall. Yeah, um, he's gonna have a tea, and I'm going to now drive carefully. Yeah. So what we haven't told you yet is that since there's a tire shortage because of COVID, and this car's tires are impossible to get as it is, remember we said we had to swap these other ones on? Well, the only ones that the very lovely people that loaned us the car could find were these, which are 17 years old. Not their fault. It does mean that they're hockey pucks. So there's no grip. It's drying up a bit now though. And this is, it's just, it is a scary car out here. No question. Oh man. Oh, okay. Oh, the gears are so tall. That's scary. It is honestly, it is honestly scary. We're not being babies. There's no grip. It is like being 2 a.m. cold, old tire technology. Down the Mulsanne straight, no traction control, no driver assists. It is mid-engine. The engine will come around if you're not paying attention. But for the most part, since the car is so analog, the steering is, is heavy, but communicative. I, I know what's going on. So when the rear does go, I know what to do. At least I think I do. Everybody. Wants to be a hero, but oh Jesus! Then down. Yeah. Oh Jesus! <sighs> Some cars want to hurt you. This is one of those cars. When you get it out here, on a slick surface like this, you're reminded just how much modern safety systems do. Ford did the right thing by not giving this traction control. Yes, it makes it dangerous, but it also makes it a Ford GT. <laughs> what, a car. what a driver's car, man. What a car. Yep, that happened again. I think I have more respect for racers from the 60s now than I ever did before. So, as a race car for the road, we've experienced no supercar this side of the millennium that achieves that task like this one does from hard seats to its tactile switches to the unforgiving driving dynamics. Yep, those are the lines, that's how close I got. It has very few comforts, just like a race car. It's exciting, it's special, and driving it felt like driving a part of history. So thank you again, Drive Motorsports.
and a special thank you to Haggerty. Without their support, our trip to Vancouver to film this and the LFA video would not have been possible. And you know what? It's good to be supported by brands that are on the same page as us. We think cars like the Ford GT and the LFA are wasted just sitting in a garage. They're meant to be driven. We like Haggerty because Haggerty wants to make it easy to drive cars like this and not worry about them. They help you figure out what your collector vehicle is worth and then insure it for the road. Not the track, that's just us being cheeky. But the coolest part is that in the event of a total loss, their cherished salvage option will let you keep the vehicle and still get its insured value. Which means if it gets totaled, Thomas gets to turn his Mercedes into a cherished salvage coffee table and still receive the entire $1,200 of value for it back. It's worth more than that, but whatever. But you can learn more about it by going to haggerty.ca slash throttlehouse. Thanks for watching.